The steam chests on Jack really are quite simple, just a plain rectangular shape with no bosses or stubs for me to worry about. As we can see here there are a number of mounting holes going from top to bottom and then on the rear end there are two holes that need to be drilled and tapped, one for the valve spindle guide, the other for the oil feed inlet from the lubricator and then on the side we have the steam inlet. Machining the casting is a relatively simple exercise. This one is actually quite clean so it doesn't need much in the way of a clean up before I stick it in the machine vise. First I clean up one of the long sides before swapping it over and doing likewise with the other long side. There is no specific order in which this needs to be done but with the two long sides now clean and parallel I move on to cleaning up the top surface. And then again I swap it over and do the other side or the bottom in this case. This time and unlike what I've done so far with the long sides I do measure and then machine both the top and bottom surfaces to bring it into dimension at 19 millimeters. I now return to the long sides having measured across them and determined how much I need to take off. I'm looking for 60.3 mil to match the cylinder but I've also considered how much needs to come off each side so that the thickness of the walls is roughly equal on each side. So 60.36 30.35 and at the other end 60.36 it's pretty good my other consideration was trying to get these two webs the same thickness or similar visually 6.43 the rough casting on the inside 6.6 .6. yeah good enough more than good enough to finish off I just need to bring the short sides into dimension. That's the first chest finished. External dimensions are all good. And to the right depth, 19mm. The inside face is actually quite clean but I will probably give that a little tidy up with a file. Although I don't have any material for the steam chest cover, I make a start on the mounting holes by drilling the outer front and the outer rear. Both are done with respect to the outside faces of the steam chest. As I machine the steam chest external dimensions to suit the cylinder block, I can now work off the block to drill and tap the corresponding holes. I now go on to drill and tap the hole for the steam inlet. This is 516 by 32 TPI and needs to align to the hole that I previously drilled in the frames. And I did do a quick visual check before I got busy with the drill. When I made the frames I drilled the hole here for the steam connection at 7.9 millimeters diameter. The connector which I've already turned and we'll come back to that in a later video is threaded at 516 by 32 TPI so 516 is ever so slightly larger than 7.9 mil. I think it's closer to 7.94 mil. So I ended up having to open out the hole to 8 millimeters. No big deal. And we can see that with a slightly enlarged hole the connector passes through the frame and screws into the steam chest body. I'm also mindful that when it comes to final assembly there will be gaskets fitted so again I will need a little bit of leeway with that hole in the frame. Next I move on to the two holes on the rear face of the chest. The first is for the valve spindle guide which I bring out to half by 32 TPI. And the other is for the oil feed which is 716 by 40 TPI. In the meantime the material for the steam chest cover arrived. This is 4mm brass sheet. It looks like it's been guillotined and as such the edges are a little bit beveled. 
which means that when I cut it to size I can't use any of the existing edges but that's no big deal I use a hacksaw to roughly cut it to size and then finish off in the milling machine using an end mill that's all pretty mundane stuff so I'm not going to include any video of that once I've got it to size I clamp it on the mill table and then centre drill and drill out the two holes that correspond to the holes I've already drilled and tapped in the steam chest and cylinder block. This allows me to bolt the cover in place on the steam chest and cylinder block mounted on the mandrel in the milling machine. With this setup I'll use the centre drill to mark each of the remaining holes and then drill right through the cover, steam chest and into the cylinder block to tapping size and then open out the cover and steam chest body to clearance. The downside of this approach is the depth I need to take the tapping drill down to, 27.75mm, which is a bit deep. The advantage, as I've called out previously, is that the holes will be perfectly aligned. It's not obvious in the video, but I tackled these holes in four groups, and with each group I reset the DRO to the respective corner. So in the video we can see now, I'm drilling the holes closest to the rear inside corner of the steam chest. Once drilled I pop the cover and the steam chest body off, have a quick clean up and then tap the holes. These are quite shallow at 4.75mm but I do use a taper tap to get the thread started before finishing off with a plug. I carry on with this approach to complete all the remaining holes. Of course there are no cover bolts in the parts of the body that align to the valve spindle guide or the steam inlet connection. I only have four bolts that are long enough so I can do a complete assembly at this time. Don also notes that quite a few of these will need to be countersunk otherwise they'll foul with the underneath of the running boards. That's something I'll tackle a little bit later on. Before I wrap up, a quick word on the other steam chest casting as it was rock hard, absolutely impenetrable on pretty much all four sides. So that's gone back to the supplier for a replacement. We'll finish off this video with a view of the left cylinder assembly as it's coming together. And as always, I'll say thanks for watching.